And welcome back to another episode of Three Guys in a White Coat, the podcast where we give you our insights on the pathway to becoming a medical student. As always, I'm Semler, and I'm here with Mike. Hey, how's it going, everyone? Happy to be back. Happy Friday from us. I don't know what day it is for you that you're listening to this, but uh, it's Friday over here at school. Yep, and we're here with Matt Young as well. How's it going? You don't want to do it again this time? No, you don't I want can't to. Do <laughs> Young just made a funny thing on our last one. We watch this thing called College Humor a lot. I'm sure you guys have heard of it. And there's these episodes called <laughs> Bad Man where they do like funny Batman skits and they kind of make fun of it. And there's this one episode where he just keeps going. It's, it's like, to be bat- what is it? It's Two Face. Two right? Face, you're back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he exactly. keeps flipping between like Harvey Dent and Two Face, <laughs> and Bad Man keeps getting real confused as to who's who. <laughs> so we we also do it a lot of time with our friends that I have glasses on. So if they take off their glasses, oh, yeah. so we have uh, we have this friend called Vikram who her name yeah he was guys, on the podcast. yeah he's on the podcast a while. So if he takes off his glasses, we go Scary Face. What did you do with Vikram Face? <laughs> I don't know if Vikram knows what we're doing, though. I think do that. he has no idea. I don't think he, he just rolls it. with it. He what just, a guy. Nice yeah. guy. Anyway, yeah, um, so this is our last podcast of the first season, and so we're going to kind of do a quick recap of the application cycle. So we're going to talk a li- like very briefly about some of the things that we didn't really go into. We're going to talk a little bit about the very, like, the scary MCAT. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about secondaries and kind of the interview process in general. Mm, and yeah. then, Essentially everything that we said that, There'll be a. We'll talk about that later. Yeah, that's all coming back now to bite us. So. Yeah, and these are all things too that I feel like the real grit of this AMCAS application is what we've talked about that we can help you guys understand. Um, these other things are just kind of like we're going to give you some tidbits, and in season two we'll go into a lot more of this. And after we talk about the MCAT, we're going to give you guys a little prelude into what season two is going to look like. But yeah. Wow, you guys want to just for, and yeah, I was gonna say like for a lot of this stuff, like there's no right answer. It's kind of like yeah, like, for a lot, even like with a lot of the stuff that we've been talking about, there's no right answer for this. But I feel like even more so for like the MCAT, there is no exactly like, right answer. And well, I think I mean, that's kind of like is, it is a standardized test. There's probably a couple right. Oh answers. yeah, yeah, there is there's a right answer on the test. <laughs> hey, but if everybody gets the wrong answer, you get the right answer. You're not hey, wrong. if everyone gets the wrong answer, is the right answer right? If a tree falls in a forest and no one's around, does it make a sound? It does make a sound. You're no, wrong. it does well, We learned that in anatomy, Mike. No, it makes a sound. You just no one senses it. It makes a vib- it vibrates the so airway. Today on the MCAT. So today <laughs> we'll, that'll, we'll get into that a little bit later. Yeah, we'll so. talk about that in our PS. No. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we're gonna talk a little bit about the MCAT today. Yeah. Um, do you guys want to start with saying just like kind of how you prepared to it for it? Because I know there's a yeah. lot of different methods everyone has different feelings on how long you should prepare for it how you should prepare for it what company there's different companies that you can use to prepare for it i i think for this i just like to start this out with you guys take your own timeline on this do not let your friends influence you if someone wants to study for three months and take it and it takes you a year do you in this one this is all about you you don't want to take this too early and then have a score that you're not happy with that does make a big difference. So just make sure that you're taking your own timeline into account. That's just like where I would personally like to start because I made that mistake. Yeah, and I think I think that again is the uh, the important thing is that you have to know yourself and to, to the extent that you know what you know what kind of time you're going to be able to carve out and you know can you say no to hanging out with friends on a Friday night so you can take a practice test on a on a Saturday morning. You know, I, I think it's it's important that you are very honest with yourself and very real with yourself. And like Matt was alluding to, um, we're we're not saying that we have all the right answers for these things. This podcast is about our advice on what we can look back and retrospectively say. This is something I did that was good, or this is something that I wish I would have done better. So um, I think in terms of that, um, Matt, since you asked the question, you want to kick it off with saying how you prepared for the MCAT and what uh, what your experience was with that? Yeah, so um, I um, I knew that I didn't want to study for the MCAT when I was still in college. So I waited. I actually took an extra semester and then studied during the final sem- uh, the next semester to study. Or the st- semester after I graduated, I took to study after the MCAT. So mm-hmm. at that point in time, I was working full time and I would go 8 to 5 to work and then 5.30 to like 10 o'clock for about – four and a half months i think it started in january exam was in april um and again like everyone's saying like that was like my plan like i kind of like figured out you know how many how long like i need to take to get through each book 
or whatever each subject and then just kind of stuck with it did you do one of those kaplan courses or anything like that so i didn't do the course but i had the books okay so yeah and that's another thing you know like there are there's there's kaplan there's princeton review there's Khan, a Khan academy like exam that, crackers. honestly exam crackers, I, yeah i think i think Khan academy is like a real good place to go like yeah. Even before Khan Academy paired with Kaplan, they're still paired with it, right? Like, they have videos and stuff now, I think. I don't know if they were ever paired with it I or if they, they just were. covered the same thing. Okay. I they, think Khan Academy got, like, a deal with Kaplan at some point. But, like, personally, okay. I took a Kaplan course. I didn't like it. I, like, yeah. It was more so a course where they just, like, threw stuff at you and were like, this is this. Mm-hmm. This is this. And, like, that's not what I wanted. Like, if I was going to pay for something... I wanted someone who was going to go over the concepts with me. Yeah, sure. And I, and I, I think this gets uh, this gets down to a, a very important part of the studying process. And like Ma- like Mike, you just said, y- you wanted someone to teach you through it. You know, like like, and I, I think there there comes a point where I, I myself took one of those courses because I wanted to keep myself to a schedule of studying and to hold myself accountable mm-hmm. through that class. Now, yep. if, if you have the motivation or the ability to, you know, make sure you stick with your own stuff, more power to you. If you are at all tentative about your ability to stick to a schedule, maybe you think about taking something that has structure, or yeah. like finding a class or something that has that structure built in where you are accountable for your action. Yeah. That's yeah. why I went into it first. Like I needed that structure. But the second time around, <coughs> I found out that, like I could do it by myself a lot easier. I thought it was a lot better that time. Yeah, I, I don't know. I was kind of like hesitant about taking a class. I was like, I can probably. I think I can do. I had like a pretty good structure plan laid out and held myself to it. And I know a lot of people say they really like the classes because, like you said, it does hold you to something. And mm-hmm. then, like you were saying, Mike, there are definitely people who don't like them because they throw information at you. And some of them are different. It might depend on like who the professor you are or who, what professor you have. Um, but yeah, I, I did like Khan Academy a lot. I think that brings up another good point is like using multiple resources. So I yeah. thought Khan Academy did a really good job of going through step by step and being here's the topics. And they had some really good practice questions, I think, for the MCAT. Um, yeah. I don't know. And that's a, a great point, too. Of I think the biggest thing that I learned from the first time to the second time was practice tests and doing practice questions. Yeah. It doesn't matter if I can read the material, understand the material. It matters if I can apply that material to a, like a real problem. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. I think that's the biggest thing is, you know, um, at the end of the day, you need, you need to practice because the MCAT is a bear, you know, it's a, it's a beast and uh, I don't know. I don't, and there the, are, it's yours very, was a more of a beast than mine yeah. was. Mine was shorter than yours. Oh yeah. Full disclosure, like, yeah. he took the older Old MCAT one. And, yep. and so Matt and I took the new MCAT where that's an eight hour <laughs> deal. Yeah. And the thing is, I mean, my body is not normally, well, I guess now that I'm in med school a little bit more, but not normally accustomed to studying or doing some sort of like high thinking, high, high brain Mental power capacity, activity yeah. Yeah, for, for eight hours. And not by yourself. Right. Not by yourself. Yeah, this is very different studying in yeah. school with you guys than like when you're doing the MCAT, it's very much like a solo mission. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And like in med school, it is kind of two at points, but. But we like, study together. I mean, we can right. stop. We can bounce ideas off of each other. Like if we have, you know, something that we don't understand, you know, I was able to like talk about it. We're not taking an exam, but it's hard in the MCAT. I mean, I remember the MCAT uh, testing center, like dead silent. Like you don't move. You like, you get like fingerprinted to come yeah. in. Fingerprinted yeah, it's, to come it's a out. very unique experience. And like, if you're not prepared for that, it's weird. Yeah. yeah. So, so let's, uh, let's talk about the, the new MCAT and how like, I don't know that there. Are, I guess that's what everyone's going to be taking. Sorry, Mike. Yeah, that's all um, right. And how, like, you know, there's the there's the biochem section. There's the cars section. Mm-hmm. There's the psych section. And there's physics. And then there's the physics and like the you know the the applied stuff. Yep. How uh, long was yours? It was eight hours. Seven and a half, eight hours. Oh my. Lord. Yeah, I mean, so I think like if you timed it out and like you get breaks during everything, I think you get like a ten or twenty minute break after each section. Mm-hmm. Um, I think if you took the total amount of time to do the section and then took every break, it was like seven and a half hours. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think at the end of the day, like like we've all said, find a study method that works for you. I mean, for when I was when I was studying for it, the, the big thing is, is they were always like, 
oh, you know, you got to study for at least 240 hours. I'm like, I, I'm mm-hmm. one of those people, I hate putting a numerical value on yeah. studying. Yep. I am more of a person is like, uh, in college, I had friends of mine that'd be like, oh, I studied for 17 hours for that test. I'm like, but did you learn the material? <laughs> like, yeah. Right. Yeah. It's, 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 I mean, I think we're all figuring that out here. It's like, is it quality studying or is it quantity studying? Right. Exactly. You can study and look at the same thing for 10 hours a day, but if you have to do it again tomorrow and nothing sticks, like, is it, was it really worth that 10 hours? Right. Exactly. Yeah. So, so, um, Mike, what was, what was the thing that helped you most during your study? Like, what do you think had the best impact or the biggest impact on oh, your performance? Easy. I think there's three things I did the second time around that made a huge difference. One, I never practiced on the computer when I was studying the first time. And the test is on the computer. Yep. It's not a paper test. Yeah. And I knew that, but I didn't realize how different that would be. Like underlining on like a piece of paper is very different than having to use the tools in the actual computer. Okay. Um, The other thing was I reviewed my tests a lot more heavily afterwards. Like I went through, every time I took an exam, I went through it with a fine tooth comb and said, why did I get this one right? What concept did I know? And if I got it wrong, I said, what concept did I get wrong? Did I not know it? Did I not study it? Or did I make a misjudgment? Or like, why did I get it wrong? And I had a running list of every time I got a question wrong. And then I could pick out my tendencies and see like why I was getting things wrong. And I think that made a big yeah. jump in like how I did. Yeah. And a lot of it, like you'll hear people say, um, like you have to learn the material, but you also have to learn the test. And they can the only time. ask these questions in so many forms. Yeah. And it's a very specific way that you ask or that they ask the questions. Like I had a friend who did very, very well on the MCAT and, uh, he said he didn't spend as much time actually studying the material, but studying how they're going to ask the questions. Exactly. Cause you know, they give you a passage and they're going to ask you a question. About Finding it. the shortcuts essentially. Exactly. Yeah, and I think that's the biggest thing is uh, it is a standardized test. So there are strategies um, that, you know, hopefully some of you guys have learned so far. Um, Maybe we can talk about those not, that, like in the second season. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. I, I think the, the strategies to these are, you know, how to take a standardized test well. And whether that's hunting the information and knowing, you know, like what's extraneous or triaging the passages that you're looking at. I mean, I don't know about you guys. But um, I, uh, I mean, I didn't go linearly through any section. Like, yeah. uh, I bounced around. I was like, I like this passage more. I'm going to do Oh, that that's a good point, yeah, too. Yeah. That's a really good point. Yeah. I didn't do that in the first one of, like, if you didn't, if I didn't know a question, I stayed on it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You just skip it. Ditch it. Yep. Yeah. Versus, like, going through and hitting all of, like, the easy points first, making sure you get every single one that you just know off the bat. Exactly. Yep. And I think that's the that's the biggest thing is, is because time management in the MCAT is so important, especially in this new one, because you think, wow, I have eight hours to take a test. It goes by. I mean, oh, it's, a, yeah. it's a lot of questions, Fast. especially so especially for cars, because yeah. you have to you're reading like a six seven like paragraph passage about like, and they're not about medicine, they're about like French, cars. yeah, they're about like French art history, yeah. And, so cars is the critical, um, cl- critical reading skills. Yeah. One. Uh, so I think the thing is about that is you have to go quickly and just say this paragraph is about this, this paragraph is about this, 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 and I, I mean, I don't know about you, um, but like I took notes furiously during during the MCAT, yep. like always like and i mean i don't know if one of, you're one of those people who don't don't think scratch paper is helpful but for me it was i need the scratch paper to document this answer i need to come back to or like yep. this stuff um i do that more in, in school now like yeah. I, I, my scratch paper is like not really used for like diagramming stuff out it's more so like all right these are the questions i need to make sure i go back to these are the ones that are really hard mm-hmm. all that kind of stuff so i do think yeah. that some of the study tips i learned through the mcat definitely have like carry through here yeah absolutely i think i think honestly just maybe investing in time into learning how to strategically attack a standardized test yeah. is well worth the investment and because I, that i mean just it's using a, it's logic. a different yeah it's a different methodology of taking a test like in undergrad you take a test and you learn the material and like you said they're going to ask you about the material yeah you're not going to know everything exactly. especially in like the reading section oh, yeah. and the so. material will only get you so far yeah you know at the end of the day you have to be able to move through the test at a quick enough pace and efficiently enough to where you can actually use the material that you know to apply. Yeah. yeah. And I think that the last point that I'd like to make on this to all everyone out there is it's kind of going back to what I said in the beginning, but pick your date that you want to take this test strategically. Pick the one that you think you gives you the most time to get ready for it. And if you get to that point and you're not ready, 
don't feel bashful about moving it. It is better to move it and get a score that you want than to be like me and take it the first time and get a score that you did not want. Yep. For sure. Yeah. Take it when you're ready. Because, I mean, to, to be completely honest, there is an unfortunate amount of stigma with the MCAT, um, especially as, as, as admissions counselors. I've heard about this. I've never mm-hmm. asked any of them directly to confirm this, but I, I do believe that it exists. Um, is, I got is, cut off from Tufts because of a cutoff. Exactly, yeah. because you, they, they yep. will see... Well, there's a numerical cutoff for sure, but there are some schools that will see how many times you've taken oh, oh right that part too yeah and the biggest thing is that if you are planning on taking it again make sure that you do better oh yeah time because if you the, the 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 one thing is that they can only see you on paper yep and if they see that you did well the first time and worse the second time they're gonna think that the first one was a fluke yep regardless of Oh, you know, you, you know, if you send them both or not, I think you have to. Send you have them. to. You don't have a choice. Different, yeah. different schools take. And even if you void the score, and you don't get that MCAT scored, you have to send that void to yeah. the school so they know that you sat in it, which is re- personally, in my view, ridiculous. Yeah, right. never, never void the score. That was the one big piece of advice I got. Yeah, was never, uh, never void the. I should have voided my first score. <laughs> Fair enough. But I, I and like I think I don't know. Second you, score, second score, <laughs> like you just said. The second time I took it, I had to dramatically improve it, and I did. Yeah. But um, I think there's a point where I shouldn't even have taken that test. I yeah. was so new into medicine still and like not even understanding what the severity of that test was mm. that it was more of a, a lapse of judgment. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah, I, I think – I mean I stressed myself out big time because I, I, was ta- I think I was taking about around 17 credits my junior year, second semester when I was studying for the MCAT. And so, like, there was just not a lot of time to do anything, and it was a lo- it was very frustrating because I had to work a lot, and it was just a bad time. And then you finally, and I actually had strep throat when I took the <laughs> oh, took the MCAT, so that was a fun time. Yeah, because um, the basic point of this is you want to get to these secondaries, like you yeah. want your score to be competitive enough that schools send you the secondary, and like they're like at that point trying to get you to come there. So like after you've submitted, like you're ready to go. Mm-hmm. I think personally, that's, that's like a, my big thing. That's a it. great segue, Mike. Yeah. Well, I think the last, just the last thing I want to say on, on the MCAT okay. is, um, I think I touched on this one other time in a, in a previous podcast is, is you need to practice how you play. And mm-hmm. I think that is the most important thing you can possibly do. When I'm glad you went MCAT back to that. Yep. Is, um, for me personally, I took the five weeks prior to my to me taking the MCAT, I was, I was scheduled on a Saturday morning to take the MCAT. So five weeks prior, I started just like a training, just like you would for a marathon almost. Mm-hmm. Um, is on Friday nights I'd go to bed at ten thirty, much to my social life's dismay, <laughs> um, and then I would wake up in the morning on time, eat breakfast, drive to a location because I knew I was going to be driving to somewhere to take mm-hmm. the MCAT, and I would sit in that place and do the test straight through all eight hours of it exactly how you would do perfect it. i like that. exactly yes practice makes perfect under the right conditions yeah yep. and you do that the first time i the first time i took it on a practice test i was like off time like i mean i was i was running over in sections yeah. i was panicking and, and everything and you know by that fourth or fifth time i was i knew exactly, got your system i knew my beat i knew i knew you know my pace and i felt very confident going into that final one yeah, yeah. that was that was worth going back to for sure that was worth that's, going a, back that's to. a very important point yeah, it is i yeah. like that point so so and no, then you can you can even see which sections you need to focus on yeah so yeah, yeah. So, I mean, we kind of started from, that's like the very first thing you're thinking about with your application. Now, secondary, we talked about like going through the application, submitting your application, and the next step is secondary essays. Yeah. So, and, and this is super similar to like what we talked about for a lot of other stuff. It's it is, basically yeah. just like take the time to answer these questions and make sure that you give them a full on thought and you have people read them and all that. It's, yeah. it's not that different from like what we, like what we told you guys to do during the actual application process. Yeah. I mean, for those of you guys that don't know like what the secondaries are. So each school is going to have a subset of school specific essays yep. to answer. And they're it all could like be mini personal statement. Yeah. I mean, they're all like what, like 250. 200. Well, they can range at 200 yeah. to like 700 words, but most of them are going to be very similar prompts mm-hmm. yeah. similar prompts different word lengths so. absolutely yeah and i think uh, they can be anything like i yep. had one asking me um about a time i, ha- I got in a conflict with a family member and how did i resolve it 
Yeah. I got asked, what nickname would you give yourself and why for mm-hmm. one of mine? Yeah. And yeah. I got a lot of those conflict ones. Yeah. yeah. I think I had like <laughs> five different conflict essays about the same conflict at 100, 200, 300, 400, and 500 words. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, I think these, that's the thing is, um, uh, I drafted all of mine in like a Google document and I like had them all set up by the school and what their essays were. And I kept them all in one place, not on the application. Right. So that way I could always write them outside of that. And there were times when like questions from one school would be very similar to a question I just answered. And I would, you know, like use that as a reference to, to look at and, and how I would answer. So like, let's say that one school asked me, how did I get a conflict with a family member and how did I resolve that? And another school asks me, you know, what's a time that you had to confront someone close to you in your life? Those are just very similar questions, but I would definitely caution anyone listening to this from copy pasting and just straight copy pasting because yeah. there are times when you will mention a school mm-hmm. <laughs> and if you aren't careful, you might copy paste the uh, one school into a different school's uh, essay. And, that and that's not going to go well. Nothing nope. will get you thrown off the desk faster yeah. than that. It's okay to use the same idea. Just don't straight copy and paste. Yeah. Make sure that you switch the names of the school if you do. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. I, I think another thing to do about secondaries is there will be a time bet- between when you submit your primary, which is you know everything from your activities, your MCAT, and your personal statement, to getting your secondaries. Um, and I know that that's a time where everyone's like, oh, finally I can breathe. I would definitely, again, caution against that. Keep going. You know, like finish finish through. Like this is what my, my track coach would always say is like if the finish line you're getting is close. here, you, yep. need to, you need to run. You know, if, the, if you're running in a 100-meter race, you run 110 meters yeah. Yeah. because you don't want to stop at the finish line. Breathe a little bit. Yeah. Enjoy but, yourself a little bit because you just spent the last like five months stressing about the MCAT, the application, your personal statement. But I, I agree with Matt. Like it is – it is like a an quick inter- break. Yeah, it's a quick break, and then you dump, jump right back. You in. can have right. a break when you're waiting for the interviews to roll exactly. in. Exactly. Yeah, and I think that's your main break. What yeah. you have to do during that time is you need to research every single school you've applied to heavily. You need to know yep. what their mission statement is. Yep. You need to know what kind of things they look for. You need to know what kind of programs they offer that you're interested in. So you can talk about them in the secondary. Yeah. Well, because I guarantee that there will be a question on every secondary that says, why this school? Like, yep, why do you want to, like, I think even Loyola's, I was like, why do you think you would fit well in, like, a Jesuit school or something like that? Yeah, and and I mean, like, so, again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just keep using the same example, like, for one that would say like, you know, you got in a conflict with a family member. Um, let's say that that school had a program about how it deals with intercity um, relationships of broken families. You can use that program and say like... It's a springboard. You know, yeah, yeah, it's a springboard yep. to talk about something that their school is proud of. And they will appreciate the investment that you've put in to research more about their mm-hmm. program. And do you have to do that program when you get there? No. If, if it's something you're truly interested in, yeah. Yeah. Like 100% in, invest in it and see what happens. But it doesn't hurt to use those things to say, hey, I like you guys. I'm willing to do a little more digging. And this is what I found. And this is why I think that we match up. But I want to talk about one thing that I know that we have a point of very big difference on. Of I personally was a person who found the secondaries from the year prior and would draft based off those things. So that way, even when I was waiting for secondaries to roll in, I was already ahead. Because a lot of times they were, if not the exact same, they were very minor changes. So I had a lot of my secondaries drafted and written before I even like got hit with them. Yeah. So I did that too. For those of you guys that aren't aware, like student, I hope a lot of you got a lot of you guys probably are, but student doctor network will have kind of pages for each school and i know everyone gets matt's making like a i'm like not a big fan of them face. either no well and that's the thing i hated student doctor network because you're gonna see the story of like a kid with a 4.0 of whatever 520 on his mcat he's got this volunteering this experience and he didn't get in do this is the only time you should look at student doctor network because it is the only time that it will actually help you out instead of stress you out exactly like go to last year's like I mean, like for Loyola, like I went to like last year's page. The very first post was, this is what Loyola's secondaries are. Mm-hmm. Go it, go at them, look at them, copy and paste. And I know Matt has other viewpoints about this. And I agree with Matt on the too. whole, like, I don't know if your thing is student doctor as a whole, but 
I personally, I hated going to student doctor for anything else. Oh, but I hated it. The yeah. only thing that I say, I would be willing to say was reliable for me was to get those secondaries because a lot of them were exactly the same, if not a few word changes. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So I did not pre-write my things. I, um, I the reason I didn't do that is because I didn't want to put all this. It, it's it's funny to say I didn't want to do all this work to write this essay and just have them erase it, um, but I also wanted to like think about each school as an individual, and I didn't want to just like cycle back. And also hated Student Doctor Network, and I didn't feel like I could trust that network because I felt like there were two totally valid. stories you would see on yep. there. You would see the um, you know I have everything going for me, and I only have nine interviews, and I'm already accepted into three, but I don't know if I'll get into the rest of the, the six. <laughs> or you have the I have no anything help yep um, so right yeah i feel like those are the two stories that i saw on, on student doctor network and that was just uh, a little bit no for me so i think more than anything instead of pre-writing i took the opportunity or that that break to research all the schools learn about their programs and like make make a, a, a like a spread almost a spreadsheet of sorts of each school what was important and i kind of strategized in that way so that when yeah. i did get those second so it, it was my version of pre-writing uh -huh. so like when i got the secondaries i just opened that the the research page that i had made on that school and was like this is what's important this is what they like this like you know like yeah. and then this is well, how i fit their school yeah well i would say i mean i did that too but i just did it like preemptively like i had my excel sheet that i knew like what schools i applied to and as those secondaries came in i plugged in when they were, when I got them, when they were due, when the max time I could return them was, and all that. So I like I had that all pre-templated, but I just felt like it was a better use of my time to, you know, get get as a far ahead, get as much of a jump start as I could. But I totally get your point, and it's not for everybody. Everyone has their own way of doing it. But well, either, either way, you both did like we all did research on it. Whether exactly, we, that's the bigger we point. Wrote it or whether we like we knew the something school. about the school before we did it. Yeah, don't wait until you get the secondary and be like, oh well, I should probably like figure out what the and, school is about. <laughs> yeah. On getting the secondary, you guys need to remember that there these do expire. Like not not literally, they don't expire. But if you get a secondary and you return it to a school in a week. And like you did, I'm like saying you did a good job on this. Like not you just turned it around, and you get it to them in like a week. That's pretty good. They know that like you're pretty interested in them. If you get a secondary and it takes you about like three weeks, a month to return it, how do you? How much love do you think that school's feeling at yeah. that point? Do you think they're looking at them going, oh, this kid really wants to be here, or do you think they're saying, oh, well, clearly we weren't that high on the list? Yeah. So yeah. you do got to kind of prioritize this part of it too, of which schools do you have the best shot at getting into and which ones do you think you're the best matches? And that's personally how I did it. If there was a school that I liked and I was a good match, that one got my attention first. Sure, sure. I think that's a great point. Yeah. Um, and yeah, you do have to kind of triage the system and just say, this school is most, most important and I want to get their stuff done first. So yeah, that's a really good point. Um, one thing that I, I will say about the secondaries is um, in, in contrast – to the uh, the personal statement, which you've had months to work on, hopefully, um, hopefully, and you've had however many people you want to review that. Yes, Secondaries are a little bit more raw because of that whole principle of they want to see that you get it in and out fast, so yeah. they get a better look at true you. Because yep. all these schools know that you've had everyone look at your personal statement, and you may only get you know, one person to look at your secondaries because just of time crunch, you'll have all these schools rolling in with secondaries. Some of them may have two, some of them may have 12 essays. So you'll look at, you know, you'll go from one week to having nothing to do to the next week, having 44 essays to write. Yep. Yep. And yeah. So and you, you just time it, good time management. You need to have time management, but also like you need to be very, very careful about, you know, if, if you're going to, if you're going to do the editing yourself, Make sure that you've made no typos, whether that means yep. you use uh, those really cool things that they have nowadays, like Grammarly or something. I yeah. need to download that thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's a really cool uh, site. Have you used it? I do. I use that all the time. Really? Really? I use that. All you the like time. it? Love it. Oh, Love you? It. We? Uh, uh, we're actually going to conclude the podcast right now. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, no, we're, <laughs> but we're going to talk about that. Podcast later. Working Shameless <laughs> plug for for Grammarly here, but yeah, no affiliation. Shameless <laughs> not plug for Student Doctor Network. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I think it's really cool um, just to be able to have those kinds of resources to where it helps you 
like sound not you know you don't want to just no, sound it, intelligent you want to be intelligent but you're also but it helps a lot yeah, yeah and you're also going through these things like really fast so like uh-huh. you, like matt said you don't have a lot of time to edit them like i don't even know if i had someone look over mine or if i, I just i think i had my dad them. okay yeah i just did a lot of like rereading editing rewording and like I think I'll probably use something like Grammarly. Or I, I just want to yeah. point out one thing too. Like I know what we're saying right now sounds like it's a, a ton. Like you've already done, you're probably saying I've already done all these other things. 44 essays does sound like a lot, but this is, it is quicker. You're not spending the same amount of time as we asked you on your personal statement to do. 44, you can get those done quick. I remember I was working at Tufts at the time and I would go to work, come home, bang a couple of these out a night on a Saturday before I was going out with my buddies I would spend the morning doing it, get it done, and then I could still go out with my friends and do all my stuff. It's all about time management. And yeah, and I think it's important to find a system that works for you. And like we've talked about with the personal statement, like we've talked about with the personal statement, I mean... Would you keep st- that mic by your mouth? Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the personal statement is, is so much larger. Uh, it's like seven, 7,500 words or something, whatever, yeah. characters. These ones are minuscule. Like yeah. 100, 100 words, 200 words. Yeah, yeah. And, and so and you can't ramble on. You can't tell as many anecdotes. So that's, you know? that was the point. The, that was the hard thing for me is like to keep it concise. Like for some of those that yeah. were like 100 words, and it's like tell us about a time that you were in conflict and how you got out of it. And you you know, need to be in like, and get out. Here's where I was. Here was the conflict. Here was, here's how I got out of it. And that's like, it's they're literally like four or five sentences. Yeah. Like, they're not a lot. Yeah. No. So you have to pack a lot into those four or five sentences. Yeah. What I always did was above each secondary, I would write a single sentence. I would write goal. And then I'd write what the goal of this was, what this person was supposed to walk away with. So like if I was right beside, say goal them to understand that I can handle whatever yeah and then i would make sure that by the end of writing that little piece that that was the focus of it and that helped me kind of organize my stuff a lot yeah like that and i think what i did is i actually like would read them i'd open up my phone because my computer didn't have this capability at the time but i would just dictate into my phone oh kind of like what we talked about kind of like typed it or speech to text yeah and i would just i'm not ramble but like talk about all the different things and then i'd have a whole bunch of raw material to work with cut down and that's rework. a good I like idea that. i never thought about that that's a good idea. it's kind of like what i talked about last time but that's yeah. that's a different sense of it yeah that at least you have it all written down and you can go in and edit it yeah, if you need bingo. to and remember guys what you write about in this is again towards the main goal of getting you to an interview yeah and these things are going to come up in your interview they are fair game so don't lie yeah do not lie and i think that we should kind of give you guys a little bit of rundown we will talk more about this in season two this again this was more about getting you guys prepared for the amcas application Mm -hmm. but I do kind of want to talk about the interview a little bit. Like I a br- that, brief rundown of the of like yeah, what your interview that. day is. Yeah, like like, yeah. like what you should be like anticipating. Like uh, like when do you get your flight? When should you get there? Should you go to the school beforehand? Like those kind of like yeah. those quick hit things. Yeah. So like you know, go ahead. Sure. Yeah. I, like because I you biggest, had the longest to travel to get here at least. The yeah. To travel. Yeah, I think like the biggest thing for me was making sure that I was out here with enough time to get like settled. So, like I obviously wasn't out here for like a week before, but I flew in the day before. Made sure that I like had a car, so I drove to the school, did like a dry run, knew where everything was, gave myself like my own little tour of the school, just so that way, like when I came for the interview, I had some conceptualization of like what was going to be going on or like what I was going to be seeing. I didn't want it to be all brand new for the very first time. Yeah, you want to make sure you know where you're supposed to go, especially I feel like here at Loyola, it's very the building's very like symmetrical. Yeah, as you come out of one corner, you feel like you're in a different corner, like. Just know where the admissions office is and how to get there. Yeah, and this is all just to reduce any sort of extra stress that you don't need on the interview day. Yeah, um, and it's not like interview days have to be stressful or anything. They're they're there because uh, remember, it, interviews are kind of one of those exclusive things. Like they are investing in you. You know, you're not getting an interview as like oh, it's due process. You're getting an interview because they are seriously considering you as an applicant and they want you to be there. Yeah. They say it's like a 50-50 shot once you get to the interview. Like, it's either if you do well with the interview, you're probably going to boost yourself up enough to get in. Because at that point, they like you enough to have brought you to the school. Sure. Yeah. Sure. And I think that matters, again, when your interview date is in the application process. That's true. Granted, if you're, like, the first interview date, you can set the bar. <laughs> yeah. So. 
the interview is important <laughs> and it is be, it's based on being a mutual fit you know you want to and, and I, it's funny because we see from the academic side of things is i feel like the basis is we're always doing an application for something and we're always like you know am i good enough do i have good enough grades you know will you will yeah, you take yeah. me to your school versus i think what it should be a lot more is kind of in the business world to an extent uh where you know you're seeing if you're both mutual fits like oh uh you're good for me am i good for you you know kind of thing i think that's yeah. a big point of it too is that you know while you are trying to impress the school the school is also putting on their best face to impress you yeah, let the school make an impression on you. So at least when if you get accepted, you can look back on the school and be like, this is what I really liked about it and compare it. And I feel like you'll know too. Like if you go to a school and you get a good feel there, like for me personally, like when I came to Loyola, when I went home, I think I've talked about this before. My mom was like, doesn't matter if you get anywhere else, like that's where you're going to go. Like you won't shut up about it. Yeah, Cause clearly, yeah like, my, my parents were the same way. Yeah, because Loyola like clearly did a good job of like enticing me to be like, these are the things that you can do here. These are the things that we'll do for you. This is how we see you succeeding, all those kind of things. And I feel like you need to remember that it is about making sure that you hit the points that the school wants to know about, but it's also about making sure, like Matt was just saying, that it's a good fit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it is a really cool thing because when you get – from these these massive massive pools of people like like we always say this like Leola gets about 15,000 applicants and they have 165 slots you end up getting down to this population of this 165 students of awesome people yeah. that yeah. you really really vibe with because yeah. they are they have the same morals they have the same values there's something about you all that's connected you enough to get into the school you know to where the school was like looked at that's that's the kind of person we want yeah that's what we want and that you all really want to be here as well yeah you've worked really hard to get to this point what what did you guys think about like the actual interviews i didn't i didn't i never felt like really like that stressed during them yeah i remember loyola's interviews being a lot so i only had one i mean i only had one interview it was here i got nothing to compare it to but i remember um I remember, like, preparing with all, like, there's, like, a list of, like, 300, like, common interview questions, uh-huh. like, you know, oh, like, yeah. the mind stumper kind of things, and I didn't get asked one of those, except for, like, why do you want to be a doctor? Of sure. Um, yeah. But I remember it being very conversational, especially, especially, like, he, you can interview with a student, too. It's not just interviewing with faculty, so I had a, um, an interview with an M2 at that point, and, like, very conversational. Yeah. I think that's like the major consensus right now. Like I can't talk about a multiple like mini interview. I never had any of those. I don't know if you, uh, did you? I did not. I didn't. I, yeah. I've, I've heard those are kind of like fun too though at the same time. Fun, yeah. So yeah. for those of you that don't know, like there's two different styles of interviewing right now. There's like your standard interview where you go and you sit one-on-one with someone and talk about like your life and what you did and all that. And then there's like the multiple mini interview where you meet with like nine different people for like 15 minutes a piece. And you go over to this door and there's like a little packet on the outside and you open it and it has like a scenario in it. And you go and talk about that scenario for like 15 minutes. And then your interview's over when like the clock goes off. I've heard people say like they feel stressful walking into that. But then once they realize like what it is, it's just like conversational about like what's going on. But they really like it. Yeah. I think think for interviews, I mean, I was always excited for interviews because they weren't stressful for me because, I mean, I consider my... I guess my my strongest point is my in person interaction. Same. Yep. And so, like, I figured, you know, if if I go to the interview, then I would be very happy, you know, letting them at least know who I was as a person. Exactly. Um, Rather than just writing it down on an essay and having them try and figure it out from there. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And I think uh, that just gets down to what the essence of the interview is. Whether it's an MMI, whether it is a normal. I don't know if that's normal anymore, but uh, standard, you sit down with a doctor or you sit down with a f- faculty or you sit down with a student and talk with to however many of them for however long. The biggest thing is you have to be who you are. And I'm not saying don't prepare. I'm saying know what you're going to say, but do not sound scripted. Yeah. yeah. You need to have an outline of what you want to say. So for me, like, know your points. Yeah. yeah know your know. points. And again, tailor it to the school because, mm-hmm. and I'm not saying lie. I'm not saying sound good to the school. I'm saying what you want to do is you want to make sure that you're showing them how you fit them because that's what your interview will, well, that's why they're asking you. I would say review your secondaries too. Yeah. Cause they're going to bring those up. 
and they might bring up specific questions that you forgot that you talked about during your secondary. Oh, yeah. So at least yeah. it helps to have, like, I read over idea. all of my secondaries, all of my personal statements before I went to those things. But yeah. I'd say one thing, too, like, outside of, like, actually interviewing with people, when you go to the school for interviewing, be on your best behavior. I don't, I don't think that I should have to say that. No. But yeah. you never yes. know who you're crossing in the hall when you're walking through a school that you're touring. Correct. You don't want, to, like, if, let's say, like, one of your friends is there for some yeah. reason. You don't want to be having your little, like, banter talk off on the side doing your thing. You don't want to be the guy that closed the door on the dean by accident. Nope. You make sure you are the most charismatic person in that place when you're there. Yeah. Hold the door yeah. for everyone. You say hi to everyone. You remember everybody's name. You want to make sure that they, that like, people, and I, I would be surprised if you made a good impression on a lot of people at school if they didn't go to someone and be like, hey, who, who was that? At, who was that interview person today? Like, they, they were just so pleasant. And people notice that too. Like, I said, like, I give tours here, and like, you can tell the people that are like very excited. And like, like, I mean, even if they're faking it, they are show like excitement. They show interest in the school. They ask questions, and then there's also ask the, questions. Yeah. Yeah. That's another so thing. I was, I was, I was just going to talk about that. It's like yeah. during your interview, I know that uh, a lot of people focus. I, know, I, I did a very similar thing with you as, as you, Matt. As I, I had a massive master sheet of like questions that are often asked. And I guess I picked the right sheet because mine was <laughs> a little bit more helpful. Yeah. Um, you mean you you got asked like what kind of cookie you would be? I got asked like what kind of movies I I watch and like oh. what kind of books I read. Um, which anything. are are great opportunities to show like things that I'm proud of. Um, but I think more his favorite th- cookie is chocolate chip. <laughs> <laughs> Oatmeal chocolate chip. I forgot um, to make that for his from birthday. From Potbelly. Um, so what I was saying is I think it's really important to have you know, two or three questions that you go into the interview with mm-hmm. and feel free to write down more as you, as, as you go by. Oh, also always bring a notepad when you yep. go to the interview. Yeah. Um, and I think showing people like showing questions shows interest. And I think, you know, like aside from writing down everyone's name, just so that way you like make sure you have document of that. And so you can email them later. And so you say can thank you. And so thank you. Did you send emails? Emails. So I sent like notes, Same. like actual thank you letters. I think and either I think one's it, a yeah, good gesture. I, say, I don't think it really matters. The hard thing with actually sending a letter is that you got to figure out how to get to some people because right. like some people they don't have their actual address. And I I know stu- I actually just had a student ask me yesterday how to send like thank you letters to a student, and I was like I send it to admissions. Maybe they know, but I, I did email. I think yeah, I think either one is fine. You sometimes hear people that say they prefer thank you notes like written letters, but I think either one is fine. I think it's more about the content that you put it. Like yeah. both of my people emailed me back, and like they didn't just say thank you for your email. Like they pulled a conversation with me after I emailed them. Yeah. So you never know. And to, I want to jump back to your thing, Matt, too, about the questions. I think asking a question is the most powerful way to be remembered. Yes. Yeah. If you ask a very good, thoughtful question about a school that makes the person say, huh, I, I never thought about that. They're going to remember you. I remember when I was interviewing here, one of my questions was I asked the guy, uh, Dr. Mirza, I asked him, what's one thing that you love about this school that you couldn't find anywhere else. And then I followed it up with what, how would you change that here if you could? And he just looked at me like, that was a really good question. I yeah. need to think about that for a second. <laughs> yeah. And it makes an impression. It shows that you care. It shows that you have the capacity to think about these things. And it shows that you're a mature person, not just hoping that you fit them. Yeah. And don't right. be, don't you're, you're, be a, sorry, go ahead, Matt. Yeah, no, you're, you're, yeah. you're seeing if they fit you. Yeah. Don't, I was like, a little going along with that. Don't be afraid to ask like negative questions too. Like you can obviously ask like, what's the best thing about the school? I think one of the biggest things that, it, well, like Mike was saying, the most important thing to know is like what they don't like about the school. But you got to ask it in the right change. way. And you can, yeah. Then you can say like, is there something that you would change about Loyola? Or like, uh, oh no, sorry. The question I asked him was, "What is the most important thing you've learned about yourself since working here?" Mm. And like, I feel like that was a good way of I got to learn like what his highlight of the, like what he thought the best part about this school was. Yeah, yeah, and I, and I think it is important. Like for me, when I left my interviews, I or even when I would sit in my interviews, because you sometimes will interview in people's offices, sometimes you'll interview in random rooms. If you interview in someone's office, you get the opportunity 
to like see some of the things that are in the office and like so um one of my one of my I interviews, love that yeah, yeah. I had yep. a bunch of cool things that you, you can take note it is a conversation yeah and I think the more that you see it as a conversation and the less that you see it as and don't get me wrong it's a professional conversation this doesn't mean you joke around and you you know you you, you nudge him with your elbow you want to sit oh up hey there and, buddy how's it going yeah none of that hey quit talking like me there guy <laughs> <laughs> but um you know you can still make it an enjoyable experience. Exactly. You can have an enjoyable professional experience. Yep. Yeah. So ask them like, Hey, what it, that picture of you on the wall there? Like, is that, you know, you in, in Nepal, like you okay. can ask them. And you ever that. know, it might bring up something that you two have in common. So like yeah. mine was like, he had a picture of the Rose Bowl, like the Rose Bowl stadium. And right. Like, I went to the Rose Bowl my freshman year and I said, Oh, you went to the Rose Bowl. And we, we talked about that for like 10 minutes. Yeah. So. Yeah. And I think it allows you to make things a lot more personal and you establish that connection, which again is going to make you like my memorable, more memorable. memorable. Yep. And so I like, I know I actually ran into one of my, one of the people that interviewed me for Loyola and that they said that they still have my thank you card on their desk. Oh, so I was like, Oh, that's I hope that cool. they printed out my email. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I was just like, you know, you're able to include things that, that you really appreciated about them as an interviewer. And I don't know if that stuff gets back. I don't know if people are document like this person sent me a thank you note. This person didn't. I think it, I think it helps. I definitely, but at the I, end of the day, yeah. I, I think it, I don't think it shouldn't matter though. I think at the end of the day, you should thank these very, very busy people yeah. for, for offering, offering you the time. opportunity. Yeah. And you shouldn't thank them just cause you think it's going to help your application. No, like, they took an hour. I mean, what interviews usually like an hour or something like 45 that. 45 minutes. Like, they took 45 minutes out of like their very busy schedule to like interview. You. 45 and it's, plus because they're going to review you. True. They're going to document you. They're going to say, well, they're going to, and they want you. to do it as well. Like yeah. I don't think most of the time they're being compensated for it. I think they're doing it as part of like, cause they want to. Yeah. I have yeah. no idea, but I, again, I think it just shows character is if you're not doing it to boost yourself in a way you're yeah. doing it because that's the right thing to do you're a decent person yeah and we've given a lot of good points about the interview for this part so far yeah. but before we start to wrap this up i wanted to kind of ask you guys a question like if you had one thing for an interviewee what would that be It's a really good question. I think, I mean, it'll be memorable. Yeah. Be, <laughs> what's, 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 your, what's your word of the day today? Introspection. <laughs> like for me, I, I think the most important thing is to be kind while you're there. I think for me, that goes above everything else. Yeah. I think, I think for me, like, I don't want to just throw like a, a, a single word on it, but if I had to, it'd be invested and, and just, I mean, that's good. And, yeah. and again, like that comes down to like, did you research this school? Do you want to be here? Like, what do you know about the people that might be interviewing you? You know, and I think it allows you to be more memorable because they're like, wow, this person really knew a lot about our program. You know, I think they're going to be a great fit here. So that's, that's one of the things. Um, and just like on a side note, know every single thing in your application. Mm -hmm. Um, I think we touched on that a second ago, yep. but, um, just like, cause if you wrote down that you did research, they will ask you They're to make sure that you that. weren't a, just like a, you know, like hands in the lab. Yeah. So that's just another important thing. I would say, I would say be aware, um, be aware of like the impression, like we've talked about it, the impression that the school is making on you, be aware of how the, the school and the community as a school interacts. Um, but I think, you know, also as important, like be aware of the impression that you're making on the school, like don't, be aware of your body language, be aware of, yeah. you know, we're all on our cell phones all the time nowadays. Like don't pull your phone out and, Agreed. Like, in the, like if you're watching, just turn around, it off. Phone should be yeah. Off. Yeah. Just yeah. Turn phone it off. should be off. Like, or like leaving a backpack. Nothing is more important in that moment than, and, than that interview. I mean, yeah. Family, even, even, family is very, very important, but, you know, your family knows you're at yeah. this thing. Even, like, throughout the entire day, if you're eating lunch with, like, other students, like, don't have your phone out. Like, you know, talk to them. There's, you know, usually... Clean up. Yeah, clean up. Yeah. yeah. So, I think just be aware of everything around you and yourself. There is one thing that I will touch on, though. At, at, an, at another interview I had, uh, it was funny. We were talking about being kind, you know, making sure that you, you are holding the door, like, cleaning up and stuff. Absolutely do that. Do not overdo it, though, to an extent where yeah. people know you're yes. trying to do it because there, I was at this interview and there was a kid who would run, I'm not kidding you, run to every single door so that he could open it for everyone. And like, it wasn't just. Hey, you like, need a door open? I got it. I'll, I'll get this door. You want that door? Yeah. I'm going to open this door, too. You guys want to go out this door? You want water? He's, I'll get he's water. a half mile away. I got it. I got it. <laughs> yeah. It's like, give me your itinerary. Give me your, me your belt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, honestly, though. 
<laughs> so it was it was just just you know like be yourself be respectful and just show that you're a decent yeah. person for that last part uh you guys should youtube <laughs> connor oh boy <laughs> connor mcgregor right connor, connor oh, mcgregor yeah. connor mcgregor give, give me your belt, belt. give me your belt give me your belt <laughs> it's a little another little side thing that we do all the time yeah. but uh youtube with think, i think this. yeah i think with that so we didn't really get to talking about season two but i think we're gonna do a ps yeah I, I think that's i think um, that should go into a ps yeah so if you guys want to stick around um we're gonna end this segment uh, pretty soon we're gonna do a little ps segment afterwards just talking about season how two. Se- yeah how season two is gonna be different than season one and kind of what to expect yeah sure well this has been a great season so far hopefully you guys have learned a little bit about the application process and hopefully we've had a lot of fun making it for sure yeah hopefully our advice can help you guys just kind of sort that out and uh yeah again uh, once these are out you guys will have a lot more power if you guys are listening and you want to have specific things answered you can email us you yeah can and like i said DM on instagram mm-hmm. yep. you know just whatever we're we're here because we want to help and it's a great to have feedback so that we know how best to help you guys like the yep. intro i sent you guys i'm going to make sure that the instagram and the email are all the handles will be on that so that way they can see it too because we haven't done a good job of oh I haven't done a good job of saying it since I'm the one that made it. <laughs> like I'm the one that knows what it is, and I keep forgetting. But I'll yeah. make sure that it's up there so that they know. Cool. All right. Um, and yeah, like same thing as DeYoung was just saying. Uh, I hope you guys have learned a lot. This has been a lot of fun for us, and I think that I think this is kind of like the boring stuff. I think that the next season is where like it gets really fun. Like we get to like kind of talk less about concept and more of like things that actually occurred to get here. Yeah. And like, we've been giving you guys kind of the guidelines and being like, this is what we think you should do, but there is no correct answer. Yeah. We're going to show you like how, yeah, how like it's completely different for every story. Yeah. So, all right. Well, this is, uh, this has been fun guys. Good season. Uh, this is simpler, similar signing off. This is uh, Mike signing off for season one. This is Matt signing off.